Now we're recording. Hold on. Hey, Brandy. Hey. Welcome to The Scoop, Weddings Unveiled. With your hosts, Tim Schaus of TLS Entertainment and Brandy Harlan, a local wedding planner, bringing you tips, tricks, and ideas to help plan your wedding day. This is The Scoop, Weddings Unveiled. Welcome back to another episode of The Scoop, Weddings Unveiled. I am Tim Schaus. Your premier wedding DJ with TLS Entertainment, and of course, joined by the beautiful and wonderful Brandy Harlan. <laughs> Let's get into it. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I was like, did he forget my name? Or he's no, I buttons at the same time. I, w- I can't multitask. <laughs> I know. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> it's that push the button talk. It was pushing a button and time. talking and all of the things. So. <laughs> It's all um, good. I know. You know my name. Yeah. That, what's up? Um, not, not, not much. Yeah? Yeah. Just things. Lots of things. Okay. You go. with you? Um, same. Same. Um, you we had, had a, a massive busy weekend. I wouldn't say massive, but it was a busier weekend than it's been. Yeah, because um, we're in March. We're in March, but honestly, Sorry. it's still not as busy as it has been in the years past. Well, we're further out from COVID, though, so I think we keep basing probably our... Uh, capacity and what we did last year, of course, the year before, but this year's not going to compare to that because those were like, hurry up and get married because I, you know, cuddle buddied with somebody for a year <laughs> for COVID, or my wedding was postponed several times and whatnot. So let's hurry up and finally get this done. So I think if you look back three years and compare your March to three years, like 2020, 2019 to like 2020 to 2024, yeah. you'll probably find some comparisons. It just feels different, which probably is a good thing. I, I mean, we maybe. We die in this time last year. Yes. Year yeah. I mean, the past two years, yeah, yeah. it's just been like, insane just to the point it. where I had the white flag up and I yeah, was like, like I early. need I think a break. we even had a podcast where we were like, it's only March well, or it's only February. Right. We've and just we, qu- we quit. Yeah. <laughs> we give in. Uh, and I mean, we had the entire team booked up every single weekend to the point where Carlos when he was still here, yeah, uh, he was like, "Hey, man, can anybody else do this wedding? I am burnt I out." I am taxed, uh, and I said, "Sorry, man, <laughs> <And> <laughs> we're all burnt out." Uh, but uh, things have changed, yeah, and I, yeah, like you said, probably because of COVID, and you know, uh, this is year ten for me for TLS Entertainment, Yay. and so prior to COVID, like we were just starting to ramp up. And yeah, you like would just start building our big team in what 2019. Yeah, like le- leading into it. A good then thing that happened because you guys got slammed in the following couple of years. Well, right, yeah. But now it's kind of like calmed down. And, yeah. and you know, like I said, I keep I always get messages from Jamal. And now I'm starting to, like, I'm wanting to reach out to, like, Corey Barron or, yeah. you know, some of the other DJs just to be like, hey, are you guys, like, what, are you busy? Like, what's the yeah. deal with that? Well, um, I did see on um, our Swell members page on Facebook, somebody posted about people are either last minute or they're taking forever. And several planners, several DJs, a lot of um, Tara from Sweets Bakehouse all felt like people were like, and I felt it too on the venue side. Literally, I booked a wedding for the end of April, a massive three-day Hindu Catholic ceremony with the, you know, turmeric and henna brunch in between. I booked that end of January mm-hmm. like that's that's crazy yeah so either it's very much like last minute or they're just taking a while to pull the trigger on their vendors and then it also ends up being last minute but they've been engaged like this has been happening they're just not actually on the ball as much as they used to be because they don't have any I mean they're busy right COVID mm-hmm. you sat at home you weren't as busy. You worked remotely. You could piss around half your day if you worked remote uh, planning your wedding and having all your shit together, but then uh, working at the same time. Now, you know, you have to get out of your house. A lot more things going on, a lot more yeah. social things, a lot more outdoor opportunities because we all lost out on that for so long. I just don't think that they can multitask as much as um, COVID weddings were being multitasked and planned a lot, a lot more. Yeah. Well, and when things are indifferent and you don't know how things are going to go, planning is only the the only way you can finally feel like you have control, I think. So maybe there was just a lot of. Well, and I'm that. looking back too at because I have a spreadsheet of, you know, where all of the inquiries and my leads come from, whether yeah. it's from Wedding Well, Wedding Wire has and been added. Uh, yeah. 
uh, this past year. It's my first full year paying for Wedding Wire. Uh, but, you know, looking at wedding planners and venues and word of mouth, whatever that may be, yeah. just overall leads coming in, uh, they're roughly, I mean, they're pretty, uh, you know, up to like up to par with the previous few years. So, yeah. like, I don't feel like the actual leads have gone down. It's just people yeah. aren't, like, people aren't booking. Yeah, I read a statistic the other day um, on bridal theory, I think, um, something about the wedding industry. Let me see if I can still pull it up about how it's going to increase this year compared oh, to I next saw that. year yeah, I know by Brittany about. Bauer. She put that up on her page, <coughs> on her socials. I mean, I, I don't know where I saw it, but I did see something where, like, this is, it may seem like a down year, but this, like, right now, as yeah. far as the, like, weddings this this year might be down, but we're getting ready to ramp up. Yeah. Into uh, like 2025 where we're going to see a ton, a ton of weddings. Yeah, I'll have to find the statistics and we'll throw them up. But and obviously there's ebbs and flows of, you know, wedding seasons as it, as I, I would imagine it is for most. Oh, here it is. Business industry is what you got. So the bridal theory um, on Instagram, she posted the wedding industry is made up of about 89% women and is worth over $70.5 billion. Let that sink in. Globally, the wedding industry does over $178 billion and is projected to do $646 billion per year by 2032. Okay. That's $178 billion. Yes, globally, yeah. <coughs> It's projected to do six hundred and forty six billion. So it's going up by five hundred billion inflation. By inflation. <laughs> um and so and she was really she posted this for uh women's uh, international women's uh day, which okay. was great. Just a few days ago, yeah. Yeah, and she said big business CEOs, female CEOs, no more calling it a little business. Happy International Women's Day. <coughs> but that is a huge increase. Yeah. Huge. And I can see why. Well, speaking of increase. Two things that never change. People have babies. People get married. Big industries. True. Speaking <laughs> of increases, yes. um, talking about my w the events that we had this past weekend. Yes. So uh, DJ Mike, Mike Tastic was in Bradenton at Sangri-La. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was he the one with the fancy shoes? Yes. I like he those had, shoes. Well, the, uh, did you see it on my social? I did. Those were actually mine. <laughs> So he had posted the night before he did a wedding, um, not with TLS um, on his own. He did a wedding and he was posting. He's he's like, yo, yo, check the shoes. And I was like, oh, okay, I see you, Mike. And so that's why I responded to him on Saturday. I with said, your shoes. I, I said, because uh, I was at Mission Lago Estate up in Tampa and, uh, you know, just telling everybody that, you know, Mike was at in Bradenton and, and Carolina was at the Ritz. And I said, oh, by the way, Mike, nice shoes. And so, um, then as I was walking around uh, the property getting uh, ready for the ceremony, I was like, you know, peep my shoes. Right? I got you. And so I tagged him in it. and he, I love it. Yeah. So those but were mine. Now I want to see what shoes he had on. They were pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah. They, like, I've the only diamond seen sparkles. Mike's shoes. I've never seen Mike full body. Like, <laughs> I never see, like, an actual, like, I don't even know what Mike looks like. He, check. I should go on my, the website? Look at my social right now. Look <laughs> at my, look at my story. <laughs> I, just, I post him, I post him fairly often. Maybe I just miss it. Let's go. TLS. There we go. Look at the story. Story. All right. We're hyped up. Is that Mike? That's Mike. Oh, okay. Hey, Mike. Now I know what you look like. Mike-tastic. Yep, rocking the shirt. Got it. DJ Mike-tastic. Anyway, so Mike was at Sangri-La in Bradenton, that venue where the uh, the sawing of the wood during the ceremony, and they didn't care, it, it a whole thing. But they didn't. I don't think they did that uh, this, uh, this go-around. So he was up in Bradenton. Uh, I was at Mission Lago Estate uh, in Tampa. I made it was round two of weddings for that family. Um, oh, that's I, right. I DJ'd the bride's brother's wedding a couple of years ago, and so now it was her turn. Uh, saw a lot of the same familiar guests. <laughs> uh, it was and it was it was a good good fun wedding. And then uh, Carolina was at the Ritz Sunday. Nice. She did the actual wedding, and she also did the after party. Oh, good. I told she told me she was like three hour setup, two hour breakdown. Oh my! Because gosh. she had to have two full setups for because they were in separate areas. The main wedding reception was outside on the court in the courtyard. Okay, where all the string lights are. Yeah, in the water. It, in okay. The, yeah, and then after that, you know, music had to stop at ten, 
and then she had to set up earlier in the night uh, in the Katazan room, ballroom, oh, yeah. for the after party. And so she had to set that up. Wow. So she had to go from one one le- uh, s- uh, location to the other. It was it was a fun night for her. <laughs> <laughs> she was probably um, definitely yes. uh, sleeping in today. Yeah. Um, but what I wanted to talk about as far as, not inflation, but um, I sent you a video of, of oh my, gosh. my wedding on Saturday. Of all the flowers. Yes, people. I want to know what this. you thought based on the photos that I... S- all right, so let me but just... But you're, you're valid. Let I me just give that. you a quick um, kind of... I'm going to try and visualize this for you. So <laughs> you're in... You know, you've got... I want to say... There's, so there's 175 guests at this wedding. Oh, my God. It filled up this entire... It was a barn style. Like a... Yeah, like kind of like a barn style uh, yeah. venue. And there's 175 guests in this venue... Now, the floral arrangements... I'm trying to see how many people were at each table, too, in your video. The floral arrangements were ginormous, to the point where when you were sitting down, you could not see the person in front of you or across from you at the table. And they're eight tops. Eight tops, yeah. Eight tops. But I've paused it. So if you're watching... Our um, podcast. Let's see. All right. Oh shoot. D- all right, girl. I know. I'm. I'm trying to stop it where there's a good. Okay, here we go. Let me rewind. Like comparatively, from the back of that table, look how big. Yeah, it's insane. Because just looking at that table back there. Now, and these were on like every you can't single. Even, like, there's not even. You've got maybe ten inches for place. Like, there's no chargers. The, the f- well, yeah, and the flowers were so. All right, so they were extremely tall and very wide. They're very um, bulky, very bulky. So, uh, you really had no place to like put your drinks, your your plates, or anything. That the the floral arrangements took up the entire table. Yes. The entire table. Every yes. single table had this floral oh, arrangement. They had chargers, but I don't. The charger front half is covered, like by flowers. Like they're overshadowing yeah. the edge of. So you maybe had ten inches. Chargers on that table was a bad idea. And then they had extra flowers that they put in front of my DJ table, which oh. I love. I don't. I that. I, if you're gonna do that, I get like I'm cool with it. <laughs> he likes the flowers in front of his yeah, table. Yeah, it, it pretties but it up. I mean, I have a nice. I mean, I have a custom table as it yeah. is, but uh, if you want to put flowers, those were uncalled for. It was abs- I want to know how much do you think that that cost? Each of those arrangements cost at least 300. Just for the one arrangement. In the center, yeah. So 300 times how many tables? Uh well, let's say 15? S- no, more than that. So if you've got 175 guests times 21, so 22 tables, 22 times the 300. So that's 6600 just for the table set, just for the tables. That it doesn't, doesn't count labor that design. Doesn't Bouquets, boutonnieres, the florals decor, for uh, cake. They had florals. No, they didn't have anything for the cake, but they had florals out at the ceremony. Which in here, I don't even think you saw. You didn't even see what they had for the ceremony, which they brought in for behind the head table. Yeah, you're probably Those looking at about fifteen thousand dollars. That's what flowers. I was thinking. Insane. Insane in the mind. Anywho, but it was a great <laughs> wedding. <laughs> it was fun. We had a good and time. And here's the thing. Like, I'm not against flowers. However, if you're going to do something that, if you're going to spend that much money, they shouldn't look like every other flower arrangement you've seen at every other wedding. Like, those to me, they were not special as far as, like, their design or their look. They, they did not have any pizzazz to them. So if I'm going to put out money for flowers, I'm going to go smaller, but I'm going to go unique. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be intentional about it. That was just fly-by-night, everyday florals for a wedding, nothing to write home about, right? But they spent a lot of money on those flowers, yeah. for sure. I mean, it was t- and it then they got thrown away. Oh, yeah. They Maybe some they people left. took some home. No, they left uh, after the – they did a, a sparkler exit after they left. Everybody just, like, bolted. They had yeah. they all – because they all came on trolleys and buses. Yeah, so you, leave, you can't really take flowers with you on a trolley and bus after that. So what do you – No. I would want centerpieces that have a dual purpose, honestly. Yeah. 
anyway, it was a good good time. I'm sure um, it was. but we need to have we need to have a floral. I've come been in. trying. I need to. Uh, I need to talk to Sarah again. Let me Get message Sarah her again. Here. Sarah, yeah, or doing? if you're a florist, yeah, if you're a florist and you want to come you on, come on and explain, and you're not afraid to get beaten up, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's not gonna. I won't no. let him. But um, just kind of give us a synopsis of the going right for florals and what the intentionality should be behind flowers and when you're doing them, how to get the most money out of your arrangements and how to also not be wasteful. Yeah. In in designing your florals. Screw that. I don't know. I want to know. <laughs> all right. Um, so that was that was my weekend. Um, but That's awesome. And yeah. then you caught some baseball. You had some downtime. Yeah. No, I mean, it's well, Sunday uh, baseball yeah. and golf, actually, which is cool. It is spring training season here in Florida, if anybody did not realize, um, the Grapefruit League. So lots of games and a lot of outdoor play. A lot of things to do. If you listen, listen to our uh, previous podcast yes. on things to do in Sarasota, Bradenton, if you have – uh, if you're doing a destination wedding here, or if you're looking for things for your guests to do that are traveling to the area, we have a whole list of things yes. from nightlife, restaurants, family-friendly attractions, and then, you know, sporting events. As well, sporting it depends on what time of year you're here, but, like, yeah. during March, if you're getting married in March specifically, spring training's here. Yeah. Um, and it's spring break, so it's also crazy. <laughs> um, yes. But anyway, uh, we have a special guest today. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, just a, a little bit of a, a synopsis before we bring him on, but uh, your social weddings. We have Jose here. Uh, step into the enchanting world of your social wedding. For couples seeking more than just a traditional videographer, Jose offers a unique blend of storytelling, top-notch editing skills, and a marketer's insight. Your wedding day is not just an event. It's a narrative waiting to unfold. And uh, welcome, Jose. Hi. Hi <laughs> Are we in frame? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't see from that side. So welcome. There we go. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for, for coming on with us. Um, tell us a little bit more about what you have going on. I mean, this yeah. is uh, I mean, this is something that you're fairly new or in the industry. And I feel like social or um, social content. Yes. People are hiring Venues are hiring content creators. Um, I feel like vendors in general should, and yeah. I I want to more as well. Um, I was uh, lucky enough to have you come out to one of my weddings about a month or so ago yes. uh, to, to just do some social content. Um, but I think it's, for today's day and age, it's super important yeah. um, for not only for wedding professionals, but I think it's really, it's a, it's a different... Um, lens yeah. I guess you could say and it's also instant gratification right like yes. I feel like at the end of your wedding day you're like oh I want to look at all the photos and the videos and things like that but you have to wait on videographers to do all their editing and that takes weeks and then you have photographers but I feel like you, what you're giving is like an instant gratification and solution it's to more that. of a raw feel though yeah too. and it's a different look as well it's not as um it's not as staged I guess you know because you can manipulate videography into a certain feel and vibe but yours is definitely more raw and real and um, tell us a little more about it yes yeah, so hmm, content creation has been a long time on the business side for the corporate side for brands to create that kind of connection for social media with their uh, with their audience and now we're moving this more for the social events in this case for weddings and we are a new drip of vendors that came coming up basically <laughs> Uh, a new breed. Yes. I like because that. Because we're no photographers. We're no videographers. We are actually s content creators. So our lens, our optics are uh, focused on social media. Mm -hmm. So everything that we create is more raw, is more genuine, is more like this what actually happening and these yeah. people can see it right Real away. Real time, yeah. The Instagram gratification you mentioned is basically uh, what people are looking for us. Yeah. After the wedding, we uh, usually share the content between the 24 for 40 hours after the wedding right there. Yeah. So you can have all your photos, all your videos, and start sharing on your social media everywhere with your families, with your friends, wherever you want, what happened in your wedding. And you can get that momentum. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Because sometimes I got married this weekend, and you can say I got married this weekend, but no one will see exactly what happened in the next four or five weeks. Yeah. Meanwhile, we wait for the videographer, yeah. the photographer to get the final edits on their photos. So that's was the need that that started this kind of new type of vendor 
as a social content creator. Yeah. And I feel like after a wedding, it, it ends and feels like it ends so abruptly, like you did all that work and you had this fantastic day. It's really a way to keep that, like you said, momentum going and like really, you know, really kind of like living in that a little bit longer than it just being like, okay, I got married yesterday and back to life the next day or it dies down or whatever. You still have like that excitement and, you know, it's visual, it's emotional, it's raw, it's real. And it continues on for, you know, another week or two or however long until you kind of get, you know, you're like, oh, okay, finally, I'll start to come down off that wedding <laughs> bliss. So part also is like uh, you'll have longer than your 24 hours story that you probably yeah. probably write your phone a second, take a photo. Oh, this is a wedding, and that's it. You got a uh, extended period of time to poly to post more stuff. And also part of that be a content creator is also that we do trends and everything that's mm -hmm. current right now in Instagram reels and TikTok. We work with our brides, we work with our grooms. It's like all right, let's create this cool trend to not only is on not only content for you, but also content for the people who are following you, for your friends, for your family. Usually, what a videographer does, they do an amazing job telling a full story, a full picture of your wedding. How was the feeling? Your how was love, the momentum? Your, your story, love, yeah. people crying on the speeches, all that. But that's a video for you and your new partner. It's a video that you will enjoy in yourself, that will enjoy in your house. It's not something that people want to see on social media. No one wants to see a 10 minutes video of someone getting married if it's, they are not <laughs> involved. Social media is, uh, that's what I say for my brands. I have experience working with the marketing. And all I say with my brand, social media is not about you as a brand. It's what your audience want to see. I you will, see, to I will say that it's, it's fun to, um, yeah, to kind of like view social media content from, you know, or, you know, like trends during yeah. an actual wedding. Yeah. Um, what, what type of trends are you seeing that you're, you're using in your, your content? Sure. Uh, uh, I have one of the most popular is the one of the, with the glasses. People would wear white glasses. And oh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did that as well. We do yeah. that as well. And also, uh, it's become very popular is a small uh, change between uh, the dresses. The bride getting ready with the ring. I focus the ring, and then when I go out, she's fully dressed. With also with the groom closer to her, and as well, someone are being daring to do some small choreography with the bridesmaid, mm -hmm. making so small changes while dancing, opening the bouquet to reveal the couple. There, are those small trends that people are really liking right now, and more are coming because this is becoming bigger as it's as it's yeah. Big. So more ideas are. What available. about like the the cool like transitions where like I've done a I've done a couple because I'm not too crazy with the transitions, but um, where I did one where um, I was like here you know you I'm gonna I have some uh, ideas of if you're on the cusp of trying to figure out whether you should hire a DJ or not here are some ideas and then I put my foot over the the camera and then I open back up while I, so one was like during cocktail hour and I said here I got some. Uh, some tips. Some tips. Yeah. Put my foot over it. Took my foot off, and all of a sudden it's party time. I was like, S "There is no other option. <laughs> yeah. Hire a damn DJ, like yeah. that sort of thing." <laughs> so it was like we went from cocktail hour straight to the party. Um, that sort of transition. What other types of transitions are are you seeing seeing that are trending? Uh, usually, mostly connected with, with the music. The music is really important. Everything that you use on social media, any. So the way the platforms working in this case, uh, this case, Instagram or TikTok, the some are actually what they will bring in the views. So if it's for example Texas Holden from uh, Beyonce right now is getting very really popular. So yep. any country, any cowboy kind of a wedding barn style, they're using the hat, they're using the boots, oh. they're using all that kind of stuff to match with the music, and the music is gonna basically we're gonna make people to watch your video. So what would you say are the top things that draw people to watching your videos? Is it the music or um, like how do you, what does that look like yep. for you? So uh, it definitely will, uh, will depends on what I'm creating, uh, what the couple wants. Because people, some people want, oh, I want just videos to be fun. So this will be what I show. Some people even see another creators that wedding creators that make wedding for influencers. Mm -hmm. So that's a different whole different type of yeah type of content because it's not only my point of view or the point of view of them as a creator it's also the point of view as the influencer that have millions of followers millions of people watching their videos that have a style already in, in place for what they create yeah but for other brides and grooms that are more 
fans of social media. They love to have a social media. They post with content by themselves and they don't want that big followers or they don't in have an interest in monetize that content. They probably want to create something more fun, something more relaxed, something to feel like a, this, this, this is to showcase how fun was my wedding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The beautiful part, the photographer and the videographer will take care of that. This is just more the fun part. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's obviously, you know, photographers, there are different types of like styles of photographers and videographers. Like there's photo flash photography. There's more of an um, editorial romantic style. Uh, Artistic. Art yeah. What would you say your style is as a content creator? Sure. Because um, I know that I'm sure there's many different styles. Dark and moody, <laughs> light and airy. There's so <laughs> many. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think mine is go for upbeat kind of videos, upbeat music, upbeat styles, and something that will actually relate with the people that are watching it. Yeah. Uh, it's about the couple, but also people want to find that inspiration they're looking for to make that fun video. I uh, had a friend that are content creator from Tampa and Orlando, and they go more with aesthetic video, with something cute, something with the flowers, something romantic. Mm -hmm. I go more with a beat, with the fun part. That actually is what I more like as well. And my, my couple so far has been like, yeah, this is also what I want you to yeah. do. Yeah. Do you feel like, and tell us where you're from again. For, uh, yeah, I'm originally from Venezuela. Venezuela. Yes. So given that passion, and party and just the vibe that comes out of Venezuela. Do you think that that's part of why, like how you go into the upbeat side of it? Like you kind of take it from your culture, like, okay, this is how my country, you know, we party, like we're upbeat where we got passion and we've got fire and we've got tango, whatever. Do you feel like you bring a lot of that from growing up in Venezuela? into the, your A hundred percent. I believe so. Yeah. So when we moved here, my husband and I, we move, um, to the States, one of the things is like, oh yeah, we got invited for a wedding, for friends, and was 10, 30 p.m., and right, the wedding's over. It's like, okay, that was short. <laughs> <laughs> so in Venezuela, you party longer than 10.30. Yeah, a wedding usually <laughs> go to 4 a.m. in the morning. What? What time do you start? Ah, uh, the wedding will start at 3, 3 p.m. for the <gasps> ceremony, morning, and then full, and then music. And, and then, then more food, and then <laughs> more alcohol, music. And so you yeah. got married in Venezuela? No, I actually here? got married here in the States. <laughs> so you were shocked. You were yeah. like, it is only 1030. Where are the rest of my wedding at? Yes, kind of <laughs> something like that. But uh, that part of the party, that part of the phone is something that is the final release. All the stress I've been accumulated for a year, planning yeah. that wedding, making sure everything is perfect, making sure the, the dress, the flowers, the, all the vendors and everything. Like that final moment that everything is done and said, let's party. And where your friends and family, we take a lot of advantage of that and enjoy them as much as possible. Because next day, yeah. hey, you spend a lot of money and it's over. So make <laughs> yeah. sure to enjoy it how much you can. Yeah. When, when you create these videos or you know, um, this content, are you more, do you prefer uh, utilizing or prepare them for TikTok or Instagram? Do you love, you know, do you work more with like cheeky transitions? Or are you more interested in like high rate, highlight reels? Um, you know, what is what does that look like for you? Or is it based off of what the couple wants? Based on what a couple of ones, usually my package will include uh, between three to eight videos, full edited, they're ready to post for them. Plus, depending on how many hours a day, can be up to 750 raw files. That will include photos and videos that will, you'll get on the next 24 hours. And you can start posting wherever you want me, while I still deliver the rest of the edited videos. And usually when it's the higher end of the package, I will include one to two highlight videos with mm -hmm all those specific moments when the brides come in, the speeches, the kids, to make like a that story part, all the sequence of how was the day in general. Yeah, yeah. So for you, uh, it's based on the amount of time and everything. And I think one of the huge benefits is that you as the couple gets to see a lot of things that you will never see. Maybe the videographer, I mean, the videographer can't be everywhere at once, but you know, whatever you're filming with, like you're in and you're in between things and to send that much video and raw footage, you basically get to see all the different points of view of your guests. And so in that process of develop, you know, developing those packages and delivering them, do you get the okay from the couple? Like they okay the video or do they go, do they ask for changes or it's like, this is what I do. This is, this is what we're going with and we love it. And here you go. So is there an edit period? 
They're not really. They're not really at a period. period. What I do is uh, I like to meet at least twice with my couple before the okay. big day. And everything that seems like, oh, that was a spontaneous issue plan. <laughs> okay. So we we'll make sure that we plan every every second of those videos, mm -hmm. like uh, what exactly what we're going to do, where we're going to be, what is a project. Uh, on my uh, high end part of my prices, I actually it's not just me. We are two content creators at yeah. the same time. So yeah. we can both be in different areas. Usually after the ceremony, the brother party goes with the photographer, videographer to make yeah. those videos, all that kind of stuff. Well, one of us will be on the cocktail hour yeah. and interviewing people, talking with the guests oh, and making wonderful. sure everything. Making sure, for example, we like you to is record the guests says, hey, give a short message for your couple, for the new, yeah. for the your friends who just got married. So they can start making those comments, those videos. And that's something they enjoy to watch after the wedding because they probably yeah. didn't have a chance to uh enjoy that part Cocktail of the social hour, hour yeah because they're busy with the photos and all that well so and they can see it now yeah i like that uh those kind of like interview style yeah. as a content creator not so much for your actual wedding video so i will say that my wedding video had i know those yeah and that was the thing you did back then like i well back then right but i feel like I it's feel obviously like it's now. i feel like wedding videos now are much more cinematic yes uh there there's a lot more style there's a lot more it's like you know telling an actual story yeah it's like a movie preview it really is yeah. um i really appreciate it, that vibe. yeah and i love that yeah, um too. but i feel like yeah this content creation uh these social con the social content is uh, i feel like the interview start or the interview part of it would go yeah. a lot further. Yeah, it's more appropriate for yeah. that. What I um think. what equipment do you use? So usually I use two phones. I have an Android and an iPhone, and oh. those are my, uh, a little uh, combination. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, for example, or uh, for iPhone, the dual iPhone is find me whoever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's like bring it. Find bring me. it, find whatever. The camera is no better than the Android, but the <gasps> process in the image is better for social media. So the image is better, but the camera is not. not. All right, so iPhone users, come for him. Cover me. For <laughs> for images? For no, image, yeah. he, said, he said the iPhone images are better than the iPhone camera. Android camera is better. So for video? For video and for photo, for photos. So the way it works is basically um, if I create raw content with a raw option on Android, I will get really high quality photos and color. But if I create the same, if I compare the same on my computer side to side, the same photo for Android for iPhone, I will get a better image for Android. Now, if I move that photo, create a just simple photo for iPhone and post it on social media, the color will be better. And that's because ah. the gallery of color of I, I, uh, iPhone is the same because it's just iPhone. So Android iPhone has so many postings for social is better. It's higher quality when you convert it from your iPhone to social media. Yes. But when you're just looking at raw footage on an Android, the images are crisper and clear. But when you put it on social, it doesn't show up as doesn't good. Show that, doesn't show that clear. So it's iPhone's better. iPhone is better for social media, 100%. Mm. There you I go. Wonder, that's all, that's, all that's you need to know. That's such a mystery <laughs> to me. That's so crazy that they would post differently. So I guess that just means that social media... It's the gallery of, it's the gallery of colors that iPhone use. Uh, the social media platform like uh, Instagram and TikTok, Facebook, they all they have that gallery already in this, on the scene. Gotcha. In the so the deal with Social Android... Social media was be built for an iPhone. The deal with is that <laughs> Android has so many companies like Samsung, Google. Yeah. They have different galleries of color. And oh. they don't match with what the social media have. So, question. Your background. Yes. How did you learn all this and get here? <laughs> because I know this is like... I know you started from the bottom, now you're here, right? <laughs> but at the same time, like, how did you... Like, what is your background? Tell us more about that and how you learned all these techie things, but also make it really fun. Yes. So I started working with marketing uh, almost nine years ago. Mm -hmm. Started working most, mostly back in Venezuela, graduated from college, met my partner, then became my husband. And together we started a, a marketing agency. We started working with some brands, started working based on social media. And we had the luck that we had this client that was referred for a really good friend. He says to us in a meeting, well, I uh, want to do this brand. There is this new expo coming to the city. I want to have a booth with my new brand, try it out to figure out, make a testing to see if it works. All right, what you have for the brand? I have nothing. So I he didn't have a brand. He didn't have a brand. He had a name and a logo, and that's it. 
But what he didn't no, have nothing. Nothing. And he said he would like, oh, go. I'm gonna launch a brand, but I got nothing. And that w- <laughs> and actually he's uh and I need to travel. My wife is for surgery, she can help you, and you have guys like a four weeks. So we explain everything that we can do and he say, Okay, I'm leaving everything in your hand. Please don't take my car when I come back. <laughs> 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 and that was really excited. We actually created a Brown front star from ground, creating from concepts, operation, training other other twins. What was the product? So was um basically was a popsicle, ice cream popsicle, deep on chocolate and <laughs> with topping on top. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that because it actually becomes a franchise. All of that <laughs> for a popsicle. <laughs> become a franchise, it make a lot of money for them. It was a really cool brand to work. <laughs> the name I remember. That's awesome. Uh, How'd you get started? A popsicle. A popsicle. Popsicle. <laughs> we could even create a backstory of why he wants a popsicle <laughs> brand. Like I once was a tree, and now I'm a popsicle. <laughs> now, now I'm a stick, and I have a popsicle. Hey, that's marketing. Create I every, love that. Create story. Create <laughs> storytelling. Create everything that for the audience to consume. Yeah. And then we start working with a lot of brands. We move here to the states. We start working uh, working for corporate. Marcelia and my end for real estate. Started working for the company who owns Call Bankers in 2021 and was involved a lot on the social media aspect, events, all that. So why not? Why not go yeah. with the actually social part of events? Yeah. Not only be in the corporate interviewing yeah. some people, watching someone, a uh, key speaker talking, mostly like uh, let's have so much fun. And I take this opportunity. I saw this girl. I love her. She's uh, Lauren from New York. She's one of the first big wedding content creators. She's uh, her Instagram is uh, Plan with Lore. And she started this as well. She was a content creator for events, for corporate, for brands. And people, she got married and her friends like, oh, I can record this for you. And she's like, okay, I can do this. Mm-hmm. And she's very popular. She's become actually making money for influencers. I remember the story that she posts. This girl, uh, she was a fi- she's a fitness influencer from TikTok, and she hired co- uh, Lauren for her wedding. That was a three day wedding, and they pay her like a thirty five hundred, and they make on the TikTok monetized aspect nine grand, or the you content that she created. Hold up, <laughs> couples, <laughs> did you just hear you can make money on your wedding? Like you just pay this guy. He does all the things, all the magic. You monetize it, put it on TikTok, and cha-ching, pay for your honeymoon. Yep, basically. That, that is was so awesome. Work. Yes, See, if uh, you have a follower, you have, you, we can start talking about how to monetize your content. And we can, I can create that content for you. I can be that person with your phone posting, making sure that yeah. you're connecting, we engaging with everyone. And that can and monetize I'm pretty well. Sh- and I'm sure going from like Caldwell Banker, like you said, in Century 21, it's a little more dry, right? Like it's like corporate and it's houses and it's you know there's a lot of pressure because you need to sell template. the houses everything yeah everything's like you know so you know flat line probably there's nothing pizzazz going on with that for you to be able to take that and flip it into something that was like feeding that creative side and that fun side was very genius yeah thank you so much for that and i i mean i'm a very creative person i like to create also and by the same time i'm marketeer for the heart so numbers, knowing, for example, right now about the wedding industry, about you guys as a vendors, what you guys do for marketing, wha- how you express yourself with, with your customers. And seeing the numbers, it's like, huh, this is a whole new, yeah. a whole new market that's for that's me. That's a satisfaction, right? It's a satisfaction or learning all that. We should have them do some TikTok for us so we can monetize. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> some more viewers. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, so in the, when uh, you were just talking about like other vendors, obviously... With wedding venues, typically, like, venues are typically the first ones to be booked. Then you've got, like, your wedding planner slash photographer, videographer, DJ, caterer. Yes. Those are, like, your top five, five, six vendors that are booked right after. What, where do you, like, how, I guess, like, how... Um, how early in the process? How early in the process or how late in the process are couples right. booking you? Because obviously this is still something that's fairly new. This is, I would say, a new trend. Yes. Uh, yeah. a, a whole a whole ass trend of itself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon either. No, especially where with, with social media. So where do you see that fitting in? Like how, how far out are they booking you or how closely are they booking you to their wedding dates? So right now, uh, so you mentioned it's a new trend. Actually, it was considered the 24 and 2025 wedding trend, the content creations. 
and how far we can be booked. I can book two weeks before the wedding. I can book a year before the wedding. It's not a rule right now. Uh, my perfect time is three months before the wedding. That okay. way I have the time to talk with the couple. Three and months. Plan what we need to do. Yeah. And funny you mentioned this because I actually uh, have a group on Facebook with content creator for all the nation. And I make that exact, exact question. When are you guys getting hired? And make the options of the poll. I can like, give you the number later today to see whether it's fun. And it goes so that was one of the polls new. for all the vendors? For all, for or all just for content, content creators? Content how content how creator. early you guys are getting hired? Okay. Early, because it's something new. We don't have any yeah. data to go with. So yeah. ev everyone in this point at least is a uh, really close community. Really, sorry, not close. Open and friendly community. All the content creators we have been talking. We talk to people from Utah. We talk to people from California and from New York. And they are friendly. They are like, all right, this is my hmm. number. This is what I'm charging. This is what I'm doing. This is my That's contract. That's so awesome. We're trying to be really open because we know that we're new and everyone is, what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. So we're well, trying there's to There's a lot of great Facebook groups out there yeah. for specific indu industries. So wedding professionals, there there's apparently a social media, <laughs> or I'm sorry, social content yeah. creators Facebook group. There are DJ groups for wedding DJs. Yeah. I and mean, that's where I get a lot of, um, you know, if ever I have uh, any questions or if I'm looking at, like, how to upgrade my, uh, you know, lighting or sound or, you know, what are the what's the latest DJ controllers out there? Yeah, I yeah. mean, these Facebook groups are great. So I'm sure they have it for wedding planners and yeah. venues and so forth. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And going back to the photographers and videographers, do you see that... Obviously, there. I'm sure there are some photographers and videographers that would be hesitant to allow a social content creator come through and be in, you know, to con the to capture the day. <laughs> um, do you, I mean, are, have you uh, to this point have you seen anything where photographers are like, no, we don't, we we can't have you here. So, or well, they haven't been nice. So and far, you already booked. on the events <laughs> I've been working, uh, everyone's been nice. That's I good. have the lock on them. It's like, if, uh, yeah, please go. This is your shop. I'm very professional on my ass. It's like, I don't want to be in your shop. So I'm very aware of what happened on my size. Yeah. And that way I can also create my content. And usually for my all my wedding planners, hey, I need between 10 to 5 minutes just for me with a couple to make the content that was hired for. Yeah. And that, uh, for that. But I have seen the social on the Facebook group actually uh, someone that reported that they they was they were talking with a bride to make the the contract and everything. But the bride then came late after and say, "Hey, sorry, but I already signed the contract with my photographer, and he actually have a clause that he doesn't allow content creators." Really? Yes. Wow. Why? Why? I would suspect because they're going to put out stuff before you get a chance to put out things. But photo is different than, than social content. Y but that's the part they probably don't understand. They don't want their thunder taken, whatever that might look like. Uh, get off your high horse. Exactly. Get off the high horse. And yeah. also it's like, a, it's not your wedding. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> it's not your wedding. That's right. Like, why you're not allowing you your bride to do whatever she wants to do in their day? That's, that's a good. Right. That's a good point. That is yeah. such a good why point. Why did I not? That's your damn wedding, <laughs> photographer. So if photographers have a like a a non compete in a sense, because I'm I'm actually reading this from brides, uh, brides dot com. Uh, one of the questions was, do you do you count against my photographers non compete? And it says some high-end photographers and videographers may have a clause in their contract stipulating that coverage of a similar type conducted by someone outside of their team is not permitted. I feel like this is yeah. not part of that. Uh, I would imagine that you would, I would hope, or maybe you may do this, or maybe this is something that you should do, um, but find out who the photographers are and reach out to them ahead of time. Like, hey, just so you know, I'm going to be, filming or I'm d be doing social con uh, content for the bride and groom or for yeah. the couple or you know, uh, whoever whoever is getting married. Uh, just wanted to give you a heads up. Yeah. Not yeah. not ask for their permission. Just say, hey, I'm going to be this there. This is what's happening. And also in the same aspect, you're going to catch vendors along the way. So not only can you hire you know him for weddings as a couple, but vendors can oh, hire I've already, you. I've had him come yeah. out. Yeah. And so that would be like, hey, I understand you may have a clause or whatever but i've been hired to do this for the couple and while i'm at it i'm going to give you some bet behind the scenes of you i'll throw that your way 
Like, why not? That's why I, I, aside from this, like that's why I try and work so well with videographers specifically because they're always asking, or uh, they were always asking. Now I go up to them, but uh, when I first started out, they're always asking, "Hey, can we?" plug into your sound system so we can get audio. Of course. For the toasts, for the sound, whatever it may be. And now I just go up to the videographers and I play nice. Exactly. Like, hey, what can I do to help you? Yeah. You know, make sure to get the audio and the video that you need that yeah. will be perfect for editing. Yep. And then at the end, I'm like, hey, can I, can you send that to me? And at the end of the day, everybody needs to look like a well-oiled machine, right? We are and all so team members. We're yes. all team, right? And it's all team couple. It's their Super Bowl, if we, as we've said before. So if you're doing something that is not team couple, then something something's not right with you as far as being in the industry. So tell us a little bit. Um, I like that answer, though. It's not your damn wedding. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you work with vendors? What does that look like? What are the packages? Sure. Can it be like a year-long contract where you're like, <laughs> hey, here's my year. Here's what I've got. Can you come out 10 times? Or what does that look like? So usually what I do is by the hour is because uh, content creation for vendors is not the same for a wedding. You don't need me to be 12 hours with you. Yeah. You need me to be a small period of time. Um, what I've been doing, I have a packet for three hours, I have a packet for eight hours that so you can divide in two events if you like. Or if you need me for eight hours, I'll be there and create that. And also include the part of, uh, of my market size. So you also have like an hour with me of let's talk about your business. Where yeah. are your business? How we can increment your sales? How you can make your lead generation? And talk about that tricky um, uh, marketing side of everything, the numbers and all that. And get, and get that free consultation with a professional in marketing that I am. Yeah. And I have I can see that was actually really helpful for uh, the vendors I've been working to, like and knowing exactly how social media works, how that lead generation actually works, how if you, if you pay an ad, how to calculate how much revenue you're getting from that ad, yeah. how many leads, how many, uh, what is your er ROI? So uh, as well, my package include me being with you all day, taking photos, creating that behind the scenes, creating co creating those uh, TikToks and reels with the trends and the audio. Yeah. And it's watching how you work. One of my first wedding, actually my first wedding was January. This year past January was on this baby. This past January. Yes. First wedding. As a content creator. Yay! <laughs> actually, I'm uh, really grateful with Tony. She was a wedding planner. He invited me over. Really knew, like, all right, you knew at this. Hey, yeah, looking for free weddings to do. Who was the wedding planner? Uh, Tony. She's from ASNM uh, Weddings and Event. She's from... ASNM? Yeah, she's from Clearwater. Oh, Clearwater. Oh, yes. okay. I haven't... I don't think I know She's her. She's part as well. She's pretty cool. Oh, well, well maybe we'll see her tomorrow and yes. you can introduce me. <laughs> uh, I was work, work, work with her. Went down to uh, Davie, Florida. Amazing venue. Actually, they were really high-end wedding, high-end photographer and video for a team. I work wonderful with them. Really yeah. nice people. And those are the kind of videographers that after that wedding, they went to Turkey for another wedding. Oh, so my gosh. Those kind of videographers yeah. that you're hiding. Yeah. And they were really nice. Uh, oh, yeah, I've been working with one in the past and friendly. Hey, you want to talk this? You want to talk that? So that was really nice. And for Tony, in this case, uh, uh, behind her, making sh when she was putting the flowers, she was making sure that it was all fine, making sure everything was complete. It's like uh, to showcase actually what she does yeah. me while the people are getting married right there. Yeah. Like uh, making sure that everything is perfect, everything sure like everything, whatever they dream of, she's making it happen. Right there. I would have absolutely loved when I was doing, you know, a million weddings. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have loved to have had a social media content mm -hmm. because the amount of work that we would put in, like I'm a 7 a.m. arrive on site, 637 um, planner. And some that's just how I roll because I needed I, I need time to process before the day gets started. But how much work that goes behind, like you walk into a blank slate. I would have loved to have had you at some of my weddings so I could forever showcase like the amount of sweat equity that went into 20 years or however many years of wedding planning. Um, so I would say to anybody out there who's a vendor, really look at this for perpetuity because later down the road, maybe this won't be a thing, but maybe it will. Or if you're just getting started out, really think about having you come out periodically through the years because it's going to help you 
for a 10 year anniversary for like Tim. Tim's got a 10 year anniversary. I know he has plenty of video and things of that nature because he's really good at that and you, you take a lot of video, but it'd be really nice if you had it from when you were like your first wedding and you were teaching line dancing. Well, I do. I mean, obviously I have, you have some, I have have, tons of video, but that's what you do because that's, that's how right. that's well, your you have a background, my background in, marketing. Is in marketing yeah yeah but not a lot of vendors have that mindset and yeah. so if you're just starting out or if you aren't even just starting out why not showcase or if you're leading up to a big 10 year or 15 year or 20 year anniversary of your company why not do a whole year of content so that something can be displayed at the party or like your anniversary party and i think i would have loved to have had because nobody was there early in the morning seven to like videographer shows up you know a couple hours before so nobody was seeing the sweat equity that my team and I put in in the mornings and getting everything ready to have that and how much fun we had and just the extreme crazy things that we would have to do by climbing on certain things and it I mean we did some crazy stuff yeah so I would have loved to have had you so I'm really hoping a lot of uh, vendors will take you up on that like for instance if you're um like if you create decor from like like for instance weber scenic it'd be awesome if you were to go in and visit a decor company that fabricates things and starting with that blank piece of wood and and drawing it out and meeting with the client to the final look actually that's something i like to do like i go to the or when you create a new product, like a, why was the full process? Yeah. Like you interview with a couple, what are you exactly doing, how you work there that day? Yeah. Something that actually is, I believe is really important is since weddings are a once in a lifetime event for most of the people, <laughs> right? for most of the people. Not for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, people don't know what exactly, what is the work that's behind to making a wedding happen. Yeah. So brides and grooms, they come for, oh yes, we're gonna get married. They don't. Ha- they don't have an idea exactly what's all the work and everything. No that idea. To be done. No clue. So if we, we don't showcase that uh, that behind the scenes, that everything that the vendors do, the creator, the DJ, the photographer, they won't. They won't grasp. No, I feel like they, they won't see the value well, of I, what you cost. Yeah, and I feel like they just think that oh, we just show up, and for DJs, oh, we just show up Mary and play Poppins. music. Yeah. Maybe. You can have your phone and yeah. in, in, in fake with the booth. We we don't know what we're doing. And you just push buttons. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just push buttons. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just there's no there prep are, time. I will say there are planners that literally just point to other vendors what to do, but I was never a point and do. I was a doer. So for me, it was like I didn't just show up and poof, my whole team put everything together. No, 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 that was me, up until like one, two o'clock in the afternoon by myself because that's how I preferred to just have things. But um, it doesn't just happen like oh. But then at the end of the night, I don't know about you. At the end of the night when the wedding is over, I'm always so sad because it's like you just spent all this time with the couple. You put in all that work, you know, all that stress. At the end of the night, it's all an empty room and blank tables again. And it's like, yeah, Aw. and that opens and that's it up where for I would have loved to have had video of that. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to say, and then, it, yeah, you just start over. You start <laughs> over. Do another one. What, um, I know you kind of mentioned this or the, you asked this, uh, but I didn't hear it. So what did you say again? Is like you're starting like the cost for like uh, oh, your yeah. packages, like your package options. Yes. So for couples like, what and is for vendors. So for couples, we start uh, 550. And what is that? What is that uh, like basically? Six hours of content creation. Okay. Two, three yeah. videos of five full edited. They go talk with you, have the same type of meeting, making sure that I create what you need. Then goes to 1100, and that will uh, be uh, eight hours of content creation. Mm-hmm. Meet with you. Well, uh, that will bring also another content creator with me. You have to have two point of view. Someone can be with you all day. The other person can be with the party, and you will have everything that happened, covering everything. That's cool. Um, and the last one will be fifteen hundred, and that will include uh, twelve hours. Start all day with you after party. Everything or if included. it's multi day, so you break it up. Yeah, if it's multi day, I can. I think break we it talked up. about the him coming for the uh, end of April since I have a three day wedding. Yeah, um, us having him come and do content every day i have a question yes <laughs> would you what if you had like multiple vendors that were doing one wedding would you be able to split those co- like would 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 you film all of us working like together? film all of us and then we just we like, all like say it's fifteen hundred dollars for the entire day uh and you can film the entire like everything would we as a collective be able to yeah I, yeah, I'll be there. I can that cover would be everyone. Awesome. So that fifteen hundred could be split between, let's say, like and three, yeah. 
three wow. ways between yeah. the three different vendors, and yep. you would be able to. I do. I will make at least three videos for each one of you. <gasps> and then probably a combined video too. Yeah, combined and then video just too. and then all the and then a, a con, uh, one link for all of the raw raw footage, yeah. and that can be sent to everybody. Yeah. Also, that's a uh, great idea. Also, the uh, I sent an email to all the vendors that I have on my email list is if you, you refer me, I will make a video of you in the same day that we're working together. Yeah. If you refer me <gasps> as a wedding planner venue. I'm there. I'm already there. I have no point to also create a video for you for your social media. That's yeah. Wow. Sort of, hey, thank you for referring me for this wedding. Yeah. And there's a bit of content for you. Well, I will say that if my couple, um, I'm waiting for your package yes. to send those over. If my couple for the end of Ooh. April does not, because Tim and I are there together on that Friday night. Oh. Um, if our couple does not go ahead and book you and square you away, um, the Retreat Sarasota would love to give you your cooking space for free in exchange for... <laughs> for your cookbook, <laughs> I'm looking across the way because his husband's here. Um, they're doing a cookbook, and they need a final test kitchen. Um, so um, I, I, yeah, I'm I like happy that. to. We've got negotiations happening at the moment, <laughs> yes. right. um, and give you our <laughs> kitchen, our commercial space for you to do your Lebanese cookbook. That could be cool. And in exchange for doing this wedding, this coming the end of April, and although it is three days long, we'll have to figure out how much. If you can come out three days or divide it we up or whatever. <laughs> but Tim and I are both there. So um, we've got some really great vendors that are going to be there. So I can also reach out to the vendors and say, hey, if we lock in this package, you know, like I'm going to give you whatever yep. for us but um, in exchange. But maybe we can lock in that package between a lot of us vendors yep. for that three-day wedding. I think that would be really, really awesome. I love the Indian weddings with Yay. the colors and everything. So that can be really fun. <laughs> Do the damn thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exciting well i think that what you're doing is very unique it's honest it's raw it's um cinematic it's different than anything that anybody else is really doing um but i know it's becoming popular so my other question is if somebody already has a whole bunch of video and content can you take that and make something out of it yes for your anniversary say it again i was not paying attention i know <laughs> <laughs> I know. If you have, if uh, you have all that video from all the years, oh, I got. We we need to. I can, can make it work. He makes it, and I think we should do a video at your anniversary of like. Well, I do plan on having through a videographer, years. um, do something for me to have you know for yeah, but to debut at the anniversary party. Well, no, I was just no to uh, to film it to film the but anniversary I, party. I think if we take a lot of your video that you've already got. Mm-hmm. And we can give make it a to highlight him. Recap we make it a recap over the like years, and we and show then. it at the anniversary as a recap of the years. Mm. That can be a really cool. entry to start the party, start everything. Yes, like, like before you walk program. in, we show this video, and then we announce you walk in. You're walking I, in to your party. I'm not yes, walking in. Yeah, yes, yes, you are. And we I are. Have a great you idea. Are. First. You are. I you are like idea. no. You are. You have to be okay. So I'm going to be planner. introduced. Yes, you no. are. Yes, yes. you I'm are. I'm going to be just no. I'm no. going to be DJ. No, no, no you're I am your planner. This is what we're doing. You are being introduced. You don't give yourself, and we're just going to take a moment, right? No. You don't give yourself enough credit for what you've done, and you don't get appreciated on the backside nearly enough. So no, you are being introduced, and we're going to have a video that debuts before you walk in with Colt Sparks. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's gonna be running the cold spark? I got the cold spark. Oh, okay. don't I know how to push a button. And don't worry about it. And you know what would be cool if we make a video, you walk into the stairs to go to the f- to the room, <gasps> and then that will be presented in the in the screen, and then you open the doors in the same same exact you. moment. Yes. Where is okay, this? We got this. Yeah, we got it. We got this. Don't you worry. <laughs> 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 yeah, I love how stuff just happens on our yes. podcast. <laughs> Let me know what you need. <laughs> there you go. We just need all <laughs> your video. We'll work together on yes. it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've got to, you've got to, you, I know you don't showcase yourself. You're very humble, but it is your 10 damn years and yeah. you've come a long way. And I think that you should be appreciated as such. Well, thank you. You're welcome. You're my bestie. Do it. Of course. Do it, do it. Yes, we're doing it. I'll let you take the, uh, Lead take on the wheel this? on that cool. one. Got it. <laughs> you just Not a problem. <laughs> I was going to anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. There was no letting me. <laughs> All right. That works. Okay, good. 
Anything else? <laughs> Aside um, from, you know, obviously. What's the craziest ooh. thing? Oh, yeah. What are some? What's the so craziest thing you've seen at a wedding? We always like to ask. I mean, you're still fairly new into the wedding industry. Yeah, but I, I have my share already. Oh. I have already, yes. <laughs> so I went to this, this wedding. That's the only thing I want to say about where was the wedding. was here in Florida. Um, um, Florida wedding. <laughs> somewhere in the somewhere state in the, Somewhere in the state. Uh, when I was being part of the wedding, everything was great. I met the wedding planner the day before for the rehearsal. Um, the, the day of the, the other party, I came after the ceremony. Mm-hmm. My idea, my I was hired to for the to recapture the moments of the party per se. Yeah, and that was an amazing party. Even grandpa and grandma were dancing. That was awesome. So those are great for that. But I see then the wedding planner dancing, and mm-hmm. the wedding planner with a drink. <laughs> And then at the end of the night, the wedding planner was wasted. <gasps> and she was The wedding planner was wasted? She he was. Said, <laughs> she he was said, I see her dancing. And then I see her with a drink. And then I see her wasted. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to coordinate the Etsy at the end <gasps> of the night. And she wasn't able. I was. Uh, actually, I had my GoPro to make a really s- uh, cool slow mo with, s- uh, with a cold spark. And was the DJ who brought the where are the calls for his assistant, like uh, making sure that right, like way there, putting yeah. everything together. Yeah, calls sparks are going. Yeah, and go this way and everything because the wedding planner wasn't there at all. Oh he was God. out. Was the wedding planner was she family or I don't know. I don't think she was family. <laughs> <laughs> I, pr- I can say I've I never gotten drunk at a wedding. It's probably she was, was just the family friend or something like that. It wasn't really family from the bride or the groom, but probably someone nowhere in the family, something like that, because... Was she also a guest? No, she was not. She was an actual... Yeah, planner. she was wor- She was dressed for work. Oh! <sighs> I well have then. you seen... Uh, have you ever seen anybody... Uh, I have. A, any <laughs> uh, vendors intoxicated during a wedding? Yes. Were they part of my team? No. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I have had DJs that that consumed, and that caused us to put the clause in our um, contract that vendors are not to drink on property. I don't know why, and I hear this a lot, yeah. not necessarily with my team, but I, I see this a lot of like a lot of the. I've I've just heard this from uh, from DJs that they yeah. they will ha- they will drink, and it, uh, the night of a wedding, and it's like oh well, I need to loosen up a little bit. What? No. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't so get. I personally don't get that. No. Um, and I prefer not to do that. Now, yeah. I will say, if a couple is like, "Hey, have a shot with me," hell yeah, I'll have a shot with you. Yeah, it's because one's not yeah. going to do anything for me. Exactly. And they've, you know, and they've also actually they did this past weekend, they had a really cool it, um, drink. It was called, oh, it was a golf term. What the hell was it called? The Iron. It was called the Iron. Oh. Apparently, it's very popular in like the Northeast. I want to say maybe not. I don't know, but it's, it's called the Iron. Okay. I believe it was. Uh, Vodka, cranberry, and um, a spritz of oh, I sh- some kind of soda. Sprite? <laughs> Sprite, maybe? I don't know. It looked very I tasty. Look that up. And they said, well, you, um, I was like, what? I, because I went and I was like, hey, I did the whole Joey thing. Can I get you guys anything to drink? Yeah, of course. Um, and uh, so I got them their drinks. Yeah. And um, I was like, "What is this, by the way?" They're like, "Oh, this—it's called the Iron." Yeah, because they were a big golf family too, and um, they're like, and the bride was like, "Here, try it." I was like, "No, no, oh, it's okay." It's fine. Um, and and she's like, "Well, yes, try it. You 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 should have it. Be go ahead and have a drink." I'm like, "Okay, well, I'll go get one and I'll and yeah. I'll try it then." Yeah. I didn't, but I um I just find that very, I don't know, I don't. I mean. When we worked together, like, it was end of the day, night's over, everybody's gone, hey, let's have a quick, let's sit and chill for a moment and have Mm -hmm. a drink at the end of the night kind of thing. Um, But we didn't do that all the time. If it was, like, a specialty drink, oh, I would try it because I needed to make sure it was good before it was served to everybody else. Like, I would just have my bartenders make a little, uh, like, make a smaller version just so we can taste test it, or I'd run it to the couple and say, hey, check this out. Is it good to go? But um, I've had people get drunk that are vendors, and it's not. And I've also had planners that showed up as planners and then turned into guests and didn't tell us they were turning into guests and then be drunk. Oh, That's happened. Mm -hmm. So So that's pretty funny. I believe. Did she sleep there? Did she get home? Like. (laughs) 
She was on the bus at the end. <laughs> <laughs> She's on the back of the bus. Yeah. So uh, something I believe is like, a, as a vendor, is a popular, we don't eat. We're working. We're running. We're doing oh, all this. You should stuff. eat. You should eat. You should get something. But if you don't eat and you then start mixing with alcohol, <laughs> it's like a really that's you a bad combination it's a bad combination you are down to be to do a show <laughs> yep how's that video gonna be <laughs> woo <laughs> <laughs> she was a pretty excited flutter <laughs> I bet that's awesome so what are you uh, what are your goals for this year like are, is there a certain number because I mentioned you know I, I heard you mention numbers in marketing we are all backgrounds in marketing so yes. um, do you have a number of weddings or events that you want to do before the end of the year what well does that look like for the you? end of the year, my goal is to do 20, 20, uh, 20 weddings, 20 events. Okay. Um, it's not very ambitious or anything like that because uh, it's a new brand. It's a new type of vendor. I just want to put myself out of more. Of course. And I, that's one of the goals. The other goal is to do more networking, mm -hmm. getting to know all yeah. the vendors, getting to know yeah. everyone that works in the wedding industry and learn from them because at the end of the new guy here, what do you say? <laughs> not only for what I do, also in the industry per se. Yeah. So uh, I'm very humble in that. So like I need to learn exactly yeah. how the everything yeah. happens, how everything works here. And that's my goal for this year. Next year, I will get Well, <laughs> I will say that I think you are doing all the things to get to where it is that you're headed. Um, I see you at all of our social events. I appreciate you being at our social events because there's really fun photos and videos that come out of that. And you're all the networking. I mean, you took time to come out to my venue. You've worked with Tim. So you're making all the right moves. I don't think you're going to have any problem getting to your 20. Um, but let's tell people how they can make your yeah. that happen. How, how, do, how they do they reach they get out to you? Yeah, how do they find you? Social oh, media. Social media. <laughs> <I'm a laughs> really? Social media. No. <laughs> What's your social? Um, Instagram. So, uh, at your social wedding, US. What, say it again? Your social wedding, US. Okay, your social wedding, US. US yes, and all platforms. Uh, Facebook, oh. Facebook, same. same. Your social Facebook. wedding, US. TikTok, website. same. TikTok, and the website will be uh, yoursocialwedding.com. Yoursocialwedding.com. I love it. Cool, I awesome. Really do. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so yeah. excited for all the videos that are going to come. So y'all keep an eye out on our oh, TikTok. Yeah. And our Insta. We don't have a TikTok. We're, we should have a TikTok. We should have a we, TikTok, but we don't. We're going to have a TikTok after all uh, this. Yeah, we, can, we, can gonna, we have an Instagram. We're do that. <laughs> we have an Insta. So, yeah, you can find, uh, yeah, if you guys want to follow us on Instagram, it is uh, The Scoop Weddings Unveiled. Yes. If you want to find us on YouTube, it's actually under TLS Entertainment, but there is a uh, specific area for The Scoop Weddings Unveiled, but you can just type in your The Scoop Weddings Unveiled and you'll find us. Yes. Uh, same Spotify. thing. Spot or uh, all the podcasts, Spotify, um, Amazon, uh, Amazon, Apple uh, podcast, whatever it may be, the scoop weddings unveiled. That's how you can find us on all of our socials. And if you want to find Brandy specific, Brandy. Oh, what am I on Insta? Brandy B Harlan, H A R L A N. Facebook. Uh, Brandy Booth, B O O T H Harlan, maiden name in there. Um, and if you want to find my venue, the Retreat Sarasota, on all social platforms, and we just started a TikTok last Ooh, week okay. nice. um and i know i'm gonna use that video i need i need, we yeah, need I to, got you. yeah okay um and then our website is the retreat sarasota.com nice so, yeah and then for myself instagram is srq tim is my personal obviously tls entertainment for business you know for everything on there um tiktok i'm actually dj tim dj tim on tiktok really nice yeah. that's huh. so nice uh, That's how you <laughs> nice, DJ Tim. Yeah, DJ Tim. Yeah. So you or is it DJ Tim SRQ? No, I think it's just DJ Tim. Gonna beef up our TikToks. I can yeah. just see this. This is going. This is this is good. Well, we're gonna work on that. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned. Um, yeah, but uh, Jose, thank you so much for yes. joining us today. Uh, such an amazing um, podcast yeah. to yeah. really kind of get to know more about you know the social media side of things. Um, so glad to have you have you with us. Welcome to the wedding industry. Yes, Thank you. <laughs> and congratulations on ten years of marriage. Yes, as yes well. that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so proud of you and your partner. Go for yes. it. And um, yeah, that's gonna do it for us. So again, this is the scoop. Weddings unveiled. I am Tim Schaus, TLS Entertainment. You are the wedding DJ with the beautiful, wonderful Brandy Harlan, your non-retired wedding planner, with Jose from your social wedding. That's gonna do it for us. Peace and chicken Hello. Thank you.